right, here's the 411, folks. Just give him one of these. Welcome to episode 23 of the 411, folks. My name is Scott, and I am here again with Jake. Hey. My squeeze, my chair is squeaky. It is. I'm sorry about that. We will get a new chair for you shortly. Uh, we are back. We're ready to talk games. Jake, how do you feel about missing your first 411 folks podcast? What do you mean? Oh, I wasn't... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you even listened to it? No. No, this speaks been too You busy. fucking asshole. Yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't had the chance. How was it? No, it was good. Um, you know, Kian was on the show. He's a natural, of course. You know, he has, he? He's, he's a talker. You know, you can't you can't you can't get a word in with Kian. You know how he is. <laughs> um, but we we actually didn't really speak about games, to be honest. We spoke about uh, anime, Dragon Ball Super. Went off topic a bit, so that's all right. It was good. Um, but our, you did miss a nos shuffle though. Oh, um, what was it? It was F Zero X. Oh come on. <laughs> Maybe we can talk a, bit, a little bit about it after this show as well. Please. Oh, uh, Keon gets or or maybe when we stop recording, you know, we can hang out and, you know, talk a bit about it. No. <laughs> um, we did... A game did come up, and for the first time ever, we had to uh, not talk about it. And, Vito? Yeah, just because Kian didn't know it. Did he even know what F-Zero X was? Yeah, yeah, he, he remembered F-Zero X. Um, but the game that came up was Cruisin' World. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Man. Oh, it's alright. You, you didn't miss Cruising World. I mean, that's the most important one. Still, I hope we get it soon, though. Yeah, I know. It'll, it'll be coming. Um, so, I've got a stack of news to get through today. A stack. Go for it. Um, alright, let's just get straight into it, then. So, this is news. Of, I've actually just written down all this stuff over the past eight days, and it's kind of all mixed up, so... It might be a bit messy this next half hour, all right? <laughs> so I'm just going to start from the top. All right, Jake. I'm very excited. Last night, I went on to that Xbox Lab design thing, designed mm-hmm. our very own 411 Focus controller, Xbox it, controller. Really? And you bought it? I didn't buy it, but oh. it's there. It's designed, and it looks sick. How much does it cost? Well, it costs... I think it's the American prices. Yeah. So it's eighty dollars, um, but add an extra ten dollars if you want the engraving. In the engraving, I just had the four one one folks. Plus shipping and all that. Yeah, I don't know about that either. So mm. ninety dollars American mm. for the controller and probably plus shipping. Australian, that's going to be hundred and twenty. Quite over, yeah, well over a hundred, hundred and thirty maybe something like that. Not worth it. I don't know. I have to see this first. Yeah. Was it cool though? Was it like cool to use? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's pretty much just the normal controller, except you know we've got I've got the four one one folks colors, mm. so it's like that charcoal gray, charcoal black thing, and the yellow, in there. I couldn't w- couldn't decide whether it would look better to have the main color as the yellow or the main color as the the dark, gray. The main color is the the dark. I know, but but the thing is. Does it look too similar just to the normal controller? Because the whole front is the black and the ba- the back is yellow, mm. but um, and then you got the D pad is yellow and the triggers is yellow. But um, just when you look at front on, it does look different. But I'm paying one hundred and thirty dollars. Don't you want it to look really different than the average controller? You know? No, at least you know that it's yeah. I, I suppose custom made. I suppose yeah. Um. Well, speaking about Xbox, um. There was a big interview with the former chief Xbox officer, Robbie Buck. Um, and there's a few things that he mentioned which were really interesting. He said that there were plans to um, have the Xbox sort of handheld system. Mm-hmm. Have you read anything about this? I feel like I heard something about this months ago. Um, yeah. Um, so they had it. Co- they had titled it the X Boy. Yeah, no, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the the only reason they didn't go through with it is because they were going ahead with three hundred and sixty at the time, and 
too much resources were being put into that. They didn't have enough sort of manpower to, to, to get the X-Boy up and running. Which probably, you know, would have been a huge mistake if they had. If we have a look at Vita. Um, well, I don't know. Um, Initially, I think it would have been pretty good, you know. Pretty would, going, but would this have been before the, the launch of PSP? I'm not sure. They said it was around the time they were sort of making 360. So that's around 2005. I feel like PSP was... Yeah, I feel like that was earlier. Yeah. So yeah, it's probably... In 2000... No, that sounds... Well, I can't remember. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I'm not sure about a mistake. Um, it's hard to tell because, you know, you don't know anything about it. You don't know what it looked like, what the specs were. Would it just be you play Xbox games on the go kind of thing? Mm. Um... Well, I mean, with the with the PS Vita or PSP, they had some Sony exclusives on there, you know? What are some Microsoft exclusives that would have been good? I mean, they could have had a Halo Wars Halo. on the handheld, mm. you know? Um, some oh, Gears of War, but we don't like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Killer Instinct? Killer Instinct, yeah. Uh, yeah, good fighting game for the handheld. That would have been all right. Mm. I don't know, just... Um, there's, there's a, there's a thing I'm going to talk about pretty soon about portable gaming, but I don't know. There's, um, do you want to speak about it now? Nah, we'll get to it. But, um, I don't know. Just like portable gaming is rightly reserved for Nintendo, I think. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyone else who tries their hand, obviously, can you, get it you, right. You could get shot for saying that, you know, with the, the PS Vita. Uh, there's oh. a lot of love for that. <laughs> there is. The, the person last week who sat in this chair... Uh, owns one yeah yeah Keanu owns one yeah <laughs> I've wanted one several times because... like they, they look really good yeah like you know they and I've held one and you know it, it's awesome to play it's just I the only reason I haven't got one is just the games there's no games that interest me I would I, I would buy one and I'm sure I can go out there and buy one for a hundred bucks right mm, now 150 yeah. bucks just to play Persona 4 yeah I mean that's the only one that interests me yeah but um yeah I always look up top 10 games of you know, all these systems like Xbox One, 3DS, just to see if there's any good games that I'm missing from my collection right now. I looked up PS Vita and they're all they're all just these small indie games that, you know, just look shit. There's no sort of big games on there, you know? No. Um, there's, a, there's a few sort of like the Uncharted one, but, you know, that's old now. And yeah. No, I think, um, I think the system is perfect for, yeah, those small indie games. And there are a few indie games which would have been, which I've played on... Uh, Xbox or or whatever or even on Steam on my computer would have been perfect for handheld Vita, mm. um, but yeah, overall or it's just yeah it's indie games or it's like JRPGs which only come to the West on the Vita, mm. and they've got like mm. small cult niche group, which um I don't know I could like if I dedicate enough time to I could I could be I don't know I could get into all those JRPGs. Well, <clears throat> as well as the X-Boy being uh, sort of announced, or t I don't know what the word is there. It's not announced, but revealed, I guess. Uncovered. Uncovered, yeah, that's the one. Um, they also spoke about the title of the Xbox 360. So um, this was around the time when the PlayStation 3 was also coming out, and they were, you know, the rivals, of course. They didn't want to call it Xbox 2 because it would seem like they were a generation behind. You know, no one would buy the Xbox 2 when you can buy a PlayStation 3. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, they were originally going to be calling the Xbox 360 Xbox 3. Mm -hmm. Did you know about this? I did, yeah. Is, doesn't, is that not the most stupidest thing ever? Well, I'm glad they didn't do it. My God, like, skipping a whole generation just because the PlayStation 3 is called the well, PlayStation 3? I don't know, make the argument. How, how dumb is Xbox One? It's pretty dumb. Well, I mean, at least it's got meaning behind it. That one means um, sort of everything is in one. So they had the whole TV thing. It's all in one place. You know, you can watch TV on your Xbox. You can do everything on your Xbox. Mm -hmm. 360 was the, what, it's a revolution. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, Xbox 3, just skipping skipping the whole number. Is... I, I see what you're saying. With, like, the Xbox One has meaning behind it. But they're just, they're backtracking on their logic. Um, here they're saying like yeah, yeah. we want to we want to skip a generation we want to be ahead of the game now PS4 comes out oh let's go back but Xbox in saying 4. that um, PlayStation around that time PlayStation 2 was massive 
Xbox was just starting. So they didn't want to... And Xbox... When Xbox 360 came out, that's when Xbox got huge. Mm -hmm. So I guess they don't really need to think about those kinds of things because they've got a huge fan base now. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, the Xbox One S, Jake. It's coming out soon. On my birthday. Your birthday. August what, 2nd. What day is that? Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, I'm still getting one. On the day? Uh, yeah. I... Uh, I'm going to try and work it out. I, I just, I still have no idea how to transfer all the games. If I'm taking my Xbox over to the shop, traded it in for a new one, where are all my games? Mm, definitely no. Do something about that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to do about it, to be honest. Um, no, something about the cloud. Have you even, like, have you even researched it? Even tried no, to... I need to look it up. Yeah. Um, so, I've just got a few comments from people. Here's what they're saying about the Xbox One S. Um, Zero Juice says, no black, no thanks, doesn't match the rest of my technology. Because um, the Xbox One S is white. Do you get it? Okay. <laughs> uh, here's where you make a comment about that comment. Wait, what was the first, what was the first thing you said? No black, oh. no thanks. Okay. Well, people are really... Um... <laughs> well, does that... You know, do you think that matters? No. I've got um, <clears throat> like a white shelf, so it's going to look on my white shelf, but I've got like a black um, sort of speaker device next to it. So, I don't know. You know, it's just people yeah. who are OCD about that kind of stink thing. Um, Noise Monkey says, It makes you wonder what the point of releasing the first Xbox One was. Sounds like this is what Microsoft should have originally released. Why not just bring this out instead? I smell a money-grabbing marketing ploy. Yeah, I can see where he's coming from, but they've done this all the time. They've done this during 360. They brought out heaps of different versions of 360. No, but like not um, not with different sort of um, features and everything. You know, why not bring out an Xbox One that had 4K capability and everything? Maybe it just wasn't ready at the time. Maybe. I suppose. What are we, three years in now? Yeah, almost. 4K wasn't really around then. But like PlayStation 3, when that came out in 2000, I think 2006, that had Blu-ray capability on it, but that was way ahead of its time. You know, no one was talking about Blu-ray then. Mm. And Xbox 360 lasted a whole generation without Blu-ray, obviously. I still use my PS3 right now as a Blu-ray player. Yeah. You know? Um jag t1000 says don't nobody need 4k so the xbox slim and the ps4 neo can go to hell <laughs> um because of sass still huh just just letting you know yes everybody needs 4k because that's what's going to be in about five years from now five years well i mean look at um you know by the end of the generation of 360 and ps3 Everybody was noticing that there was no Blu-ray player on the 360. Mm. No one cared at the start when they first came out. Um, I don't know. I think 4K will be around quicker than five years. Well, yeah, but it's going to be... I mean, if you type in JB, um, JB Hi-Fi website, look for 4K movies. There's about maybe 10 movies that you can buy on 4K right now. Oh, sure. So, you know, give it some time. There'll be just, you know, a whole... Page, whole pages worth of 4K movies. <clears throat> what? Oh, I thought you were moving on. Um, well, we just talked about this just before the podcast, but Stranger Things. Uh huh. Watch it, and we need to do a spoiler cast. Okay. So sounds fun. Um, Stranger Things is a show that just came out on Netflix a week ago, maybe oh, a couple weeks ago. Couple weeks. Um. And it's freaking awesome. One of my favorite shows. Yeah. Um, it seemed to me, because it was eight episodes, I didn't realize. I, I, I was up to like episode two or three and um, I thought it was like a 12 episode thing. But yeah, no, then I saw it, it was like eight episodes. So I'm like, wow, I could just finish this just like straight away. So I did finish it in two nights. Is um, that a good length for you, eight episodes? It was, yeah, it was really good actually. Yeah, because yeah, the more episodes the series is, the more it cheapens it, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so the less episodes there are the more special they feel just because there's so little of them you know and you know 
maybe you're gonna have to wait a whole year for the for the rest of them so you have to sort of not that you know it bothered me because i just binge watched all mm. of them but that's what next netflix is you know it makes you binge watch it because it releases everything at once sure but um the entire time right up until the end even after the end um i thought it was just a mini series I didn't know that there it would it would it was a going to be a season thing that it would come back. Oh, it it is though. Well, that's what I heard. I was listening to a, a spoiler cast about Stranger Things after I watched it, and they were saying they were talking about what could happen in season two, like it was going to happen. Mm. So, but I, I, it didn't make sense to me because yeah, I mean, I thought it ended perfectly. Just it could end just there, you okay. know. Yeah. Um, you know how some horror movies sort of leave leave an open ending hanging but it makes you sort of think oh what could happen you know this is sort of what happens in this one but like you could just leave it there you know you don't need to continue making more seasons about it so i mean that's what sort of concerns me are they going to cheapen the series just by making more from it so mm. i don't mm. know but you know awesome series like when i was watching it um it just incorporates every single genre. Sci-fi, horror are the two main ones, but it's got, you know, comedy, action. It's got three different plot lines going on. One for the adults, one for teenagers in high school, and one for kids. Like, th- the three separate plot lines, and they're all for sort of... All for different ages. So, that's, it's really cool. That's really cool. Um, the best thing about this series, Jake, and uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate this, is the goddamn music. I've heard it's pretty good, actually. It's really good. Um, it's so sort of, you know, 80s kind of futuristic horror. Oh, it's just, I can't explain it. It's really it's really cool. But, um, all right. yeah, you got to watch it. Well, all right. That's that's my that's my plan for tomorrow, then. Nice, nice. Um, as I said, <laughs> the the notes on my book are all mixed up, so I'm just, I'm just, just, whatever I see, I'm just going for it. Um, Comic-Con was on. Not that we care, really, um, last week. But here's a chance to speak about any highlights that you saw. I missed all of it because I was away in a field for last weekend and I didn't have any internet. So, right. (laughs) So, tell me what happened, Scott. To be honest, I missed all of it as well because I had no idea it was on. And then all of a sudden, I went on IMDb, and there was just maybe five or six new tra- new movie trailers. Oh, okay. Um, so some some cool movie trailers that were announced. I can only think of one in my head actually. Um, Kong Scar- Sc- Kong Skull Island, oh, yeah. the new King Kong movie, looks pretty awesome. Um, and the whole bunch of you know superhero shit. Oh, Marvel stuff. Ugh. Yeah, all that stuff. Um, oh, actually, a Justice League um, trailer was announced as well. Cool. Tra- really? So, I mean, that that's better than Marvel, you know, mm. all those kinds of movies. Um, was there Suicide Squad stuff? Yeah, there was a few Suicide Squad stuff and, you know. Keep it on the topic of movies. Hang on, sorry. Backtrack a little bit. There was no game stuff at Comic-Con? It's more just, it's more just comic. I think, I think it's, yeah, movie. movies and TV series and all that stuff. Um, I th- there might have been some game stuff, but... I didn't really look too deeply into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep it on the topic of movies. Do you know about the diver- di- the Divergent series? Nah, not really. I know of it. Yeah, so this is another series, kind of like Hunger Games, um, where they're originally books turned into movies. They try to make... Um, I think there are three books, um, but they, again, as always, in the, in the final film... They try to sort of make it into a two-parter mm-hmm. kind of thing. I think I think there are three films. I'm not sure. I mean, is the third one? Books. I'm pretty sure the third one's coming out. Isn't the it? third one came out. So the, the first one came out. It was a, it was a pretty you know huge success. I saw it at the movies. It was really cool. Second one came out. I saw it at the movies. Awesome. I was really looking forward to the third one. And the third one came out, which I didn't see, um, but there were some really bad reviews, like really bad. And apparently, I haven't read the books either, but apparently the third book is really bad as well. No. So lots of disappointing things in the books. You couldn't really do much with the movie, I guess. But um, there's going to be a fourth movie, and it's going to be coming straight to TV. Oh. Like, that's the first time that's happened with one of these, you know, young adult books yeah. coming to movies. and That's a big middle finger to the fans. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Especially, I mean, the people who... Are, the actors and the people who are committed to making four films, mm. and they've realised the, the last film which is supposed to be you know the, probably the best one goes straight to tv it's such a shame hey yeah it's it's it is a shame but um 
you know, I don't know if this gonna is this, this lowers the budget, so it's gonna be look like a cheaper film, and because mm. TV movies wouldn't get much of a budget. I mean, especially if the third film bombed, they're not gonna get much money to finish off the series. Yeah. Um, but also more news that came out of this is they're gonna be introducing some characters into in this fourth um, film to start a spin off TV series after it ends. Okay. So um, you know. I guess good news for the fans as well. To, to be honest, I, I think the, in my experience, Divergent fans are few and far between. I hardly hear anything about it. Yeah, I guess they're kind of quiet. Mm. It's not as, you know, mainstream as Hunger Games, I guess. So Although, I haven't seen the last Hunger Games movie, mm. but the second to last one, the one that was divided into two, um, was kind of awful, so... Oh, no, no, I, I actually like that one. The, the one that I haven't seen is the newest one. Same. The, the last one, yeah. Yeah, same. Oh, but okay. The one yeah. before that. Yeah. I thought, you know, to be honest, I thought they, I thought the first one was kind of a bit boring, but they get, kept getting better and better. The second one was better. Third yeah. one got even better. That's what I thought. No, I just like, I know the story's supposed to progress. The, the thing I liked about Hunger Games was the Battle Royale yeah, s- yeah. The thing. And they didn't have that in the in third the, one. No, that's what... I mean, I, that's like Harry Potter. The thing that I like about Harry Potter is Hogwarts. Yeah. In the seventh film, they didn't have Hogwarts in it. Mm-hmm. Um, even the... Oh, the eighth film was all Hogwarts, yeah. Um, you haven't seen that either, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's with you in skipping the last film? I don't know, actually. I haven't seen The Last Hobbit either. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's okay. so weird, isn't it? Why yeah. don't I miss out <laughs> the last film? Oh, you just... I have no closure on these no. things. <laughs> okay, you need to make a night where you just watch the last films of all these things. Okay. Um, but also, have you heard of the Maze Runner? Yes. Yeah. So I saw that at the movies, and that was really good. And straight after I saw that film, actually, I wanted to read all the books because that's another thing. It came out as a th- three books, a, th- a trilogy. So they were going to make three movies. Um, I wanted to read all the books, um, so I could see the read the books before I see the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so straight after the Maze Runner, I went home, downloaded the um, Maze Runner book, read it all. So after just seeing the movie as well. Um, and then after I finished the, the first book, I was like, I can't be bothered anymore. <laughs> so I never found out what happened after the movie. Oh, yeah. Cause you know, after the movie finishes, you know, you have to wait maybe a year or two to see what happens next. I didn't want that. You could just read the book, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I never got there. You still have them. You can still do it. I know. I know. They aren't big books, are they? They're actually, they're actually quite a bit, bit of a read. Oh. You know, it took me, you know, maybe two weeks or something to read it. Oh, that's so. not too bad. Yeah. Um, Speaking of movies, quickly. Okay. I did watch Batman vs Superman last night. I was I was going to watch that last night. Yeah. I had it ready, but then I was like, it goes for three hours. The mm. one that I had is, is it is did you see the three hour one? Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I don't have time for that. So. Yeah. But yeah, how was it? Uh, as bad as everyone says. What? Yeah. It's just. It's just. Wait, did doesn't... you did you like Man of Steel? I mean, I didn't see that. Okay, well, you can't compare it then, can you? No, I, it's just that. It's just, I can, you can see it's all there. You can see it's, you can see what they're trying to do. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Do you think it's the director? Uh, I don't know who the director is. Zach Sh- Schneider? 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 He directed Watchmen as well. Oh, I like that movie. Mm. No, you don't? I, I, I started watching it, but then I turned it off. I was like, ah, I can't be bothered. I like Watchmen. Mm. I can't think of anything else he's directed, but I don't know. I liked um, I liked what's his name, Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah, yeah. As Lex Luthor, so I actually thought that was an interesting choice. <laughs> he just plays the same character in every fucking movie. True, but I think he's an amazing actor. The social, what's it called? The Social Network is one social of my favorite Network, movies. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't work. Um, so whatevs. What 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 devs? You know, developers. Speaking of developers, <laughs> oh my Christ. god, oh, that was smooth, that was smooth. Um, Assassin's Creed developers um, came out with sort of like a mini, mini survey kind of thing. Not a survey, just a question on their forums. They were seeking suggestions about in-game economy. So how sort of the economy system works in their game. Um, maybe, you know, how the money system works, the upgrades, skill upgrades and everything. They were seeking suggestions about how they could make it better. So this kind of gives little maybe hints about what um, the next Assassin's Creed is going to look like. And the biggest hint is is it's probably going to 
the whole system is going to change. Mm. Um, I've been playing Syndicate. I played it for about three hours last night, actually. And, um, yeah, this upgrade system really hasn't changed since Assassin's Creed 2. You know, they found a really good system in Assassin's Creed 2, and they really, they've sort of built upon it a little bit with every game, but they really haven't changed it since. So I think big changes are coming. Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, oh, yeah, that, that's that's true, because why else would they take a year off? Yeah, the game? yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the only reason I can think of is because m- some of their developers were working on Watch Dogs 2. Sure. But, um, no, I think, yeah, big changes are coming for Assassin's Creed. And I'm excited for that. Me too, me yeah. too. I think it would, half my excitement depends on where the game would be set. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another thing. Yeah. It's oh, for years people have just been asking for either Japan or Egypt, you know, something Japan. like that. You know, Japan would be amazing. The, the rumor is right now it's Egypt, yeah. which wouldn't be too bad. It's something different. We, we just need to get out of Europe. That's true. Yeah. Um, what are the games that have been out of Europe? Which is Assassin's Creed Three in America. Yes. Um, Black Flag in the number one was in um, um, yeah number one is in the Middle East. Middle East. Um, and Black Flag was in this sort of Caribbean, so there's only been three out of the nine games. Wasn't um, that Assassin's Creed Rogue, or whatever? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's sort that of... was in, that was like the style of number three, uh, number four. Yeah, yeah, but that was sort of in the Arctic or something, I think. Oh, really? It was in the snow, something like that. Yeah, definitely wasn't Europe then. No, not Europe. So yeah, I guess four out of the nine games have been set away from Europe. So five in Europe. Mm. Mm, they need to get away for sure. Um, let's speak a little bit about some Pokemon. Okay. Someone in America has caught them all in Pokemon Go. I didn't think that was... I didn't think you were able to, to do that yet. Well, not caught them all, but everything that's available. And oh. I think that's a, maybe 140, 40 something, 145 Pokemon or something. Yep. But I haven't played this yet, but you have. How long do you, would you have to spend on that app to, to be able to do this? You would have to actually travel, um to get so obviously he's American yeah because Americans are dumb um <laughs> oh no you didn't but yeah you actually like cause certain Pokemon only spawn in certain regions and as as more Pokemon as Pokemon get more rare obviously they're only set to specific areas of the world as well mm. um so some people are saying Kangaskhan's only spawn in Australia uh, I, don't, I don't know how true that is mm. but uh, yeah, I know certain Pokemon only spawn in certain areas. So, what, the game's been out for a little less than a month? Four weeks? Yeah, yeah. Um, solid effort. Sounds like he's got no job. <laughs> <laughs> no life. Yeah. Come on, like... Um, but I heard that uh, I think more people are using the map system on Pokemon Go than Google Maps. <laughs> um, so that's a fact. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Um, well, yeah, this game has become the number one selling pay like app, number mm. one fastest buying app. Well, I don't know what the stat. Uh, I don't know what the sort of the stats are now, but it was a couple of weeks ago that I heard that they were making two million a day from Pokemon Go, and it's a free app, yeah. so it's all just from advertisements. I think that's how no. They make the there's money. there's microtransactions. Oh, micro- okay, so that's how they make two million a day. Yeah, um, that's huge. Hey. And did you see... And ha- how, how much profit do you think Nintendo's getting out of this? Because well, obviously it's not their game. <clears throat> I was just about to say, um, because people found out that Nintendo own a very small share of the game. Yeah. That, you know, when, when the game came out, Nintendo shares rose. Yeah. Like, dramatically. And then when investors started finding out, wait, Nintendo really have no involvement, straight back down. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's mainly Pokemon Company and Niantic. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. even though it's it's even though it's Nintendo's... What would you call it? Nintendo's... What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Even though Nintendo uh, have Pokemon as their kind of... Their child. Mm, mm. Um, I don't think they had much to do with Pokemon Go. Yeah. Because nowhere in the app does it mention Nintendo. Right. It's just Pokemon Go. Uh, and Pokemon Company and Niantic. And Niantic, yeah. But, but obviously, because people's nostalgia instantly relate nintendo and yeah, pokemon yeah this helps nintendo either yeah. way so um I, I it's still i'm so interested to see if this affects sales of sun and moon like i really hope it does i hope so too 
Yeah. Although I just read as well the newest Pokemon movie that just came out in the cinemas in mm. Japan um, was the worst opening weekend for any Pokemon movie in existence. So I'm not sure how that... And that's the last um, X, Y, and Z movie as well. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not sure how that but relates. I don't, I don't think you could sort of base it off that anyway because that's a release in Japan and everyone in Japan already likes Pokemon anyway. So you're not going to see sort of anything different. The, the big changes are going to be away from Japan. Mm. You're going to get new people back into Pokemon away from Japan because, mm. um, you know, in America or Australia, you know, you can see a huge difference there. Pokemon Go came to Japan two weeks late anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> August 1st, which is Monday, three, Day my three days from now? Yes. Um, that is when we're actually going to be seeing a new Pokemon trailer. Oh, my God, Another really? Another one, yeah. So, um... It was announced that, yeah, August 1st, a new one's coming out. Um, don't know if it's more gameplay or just some more, you know, Pokemon announcements, but fuck, they're just they're just giving us everything, aren't they? They're just showing it all. Look, I can't, I can't complain about it, but is this too much now? I don't know. Like, but if they keep doing this until the game's released, it's going to be too much. Yeah. It's like one every fortnight now. Mmm... Look, I'm, I'm just going to stick to my guns what we said a couple weeks ago and they're just they're just riding off the success of Pokemon Go. As, yeah, po- yeah. as, as time goes on and Pokemon Go's steam just dies off, mm. I'm sure these trailers will die off as well. Maybe Pokemon Go should have been released closer to Sun and Moon. Yeah, I mean... Who knew this was going to be huge, huge like this though, you know? Every day, still every day, people are talking about Pokemon in some way or form. Mm-hmm. And I like that because cool Pokemon, yeah, it's it's cool to keep Pokemon relevant, but oh, not like this, not like this. <laughs> um, NX rumors, Jake. Oh, God. There's been a big one, and uh, it seems plausible. Mm. So the rumor is that the console um, will have detachable controllers. Mm. Have you seen this rumor? Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> cartridges. And also, it'll be sort of a system where you can sort of attach it to a, a thing where it can just go onto the TV. So it's like it's like it is a handheld, but it is maybe just a handheld that you can attach to a little plug-in thing that will just transfer to your TV screen. Yeah. Um, Essentially, this is Wii U two. I don't think so. Why? No, I, the whole thing with the whole thing with taking it away from the TV and then putting it back. But it it doesn't seem like it's a home console, this one. It seems like it's more of a handheld, but you can just use it as a home console. Mm. So they're going from... Which is weird, because if this is true, you know, everyone's saying handhelds are dying, but Nintendo's just going all out, like, giving you sort of a handheld, Mm. which is amazing. I'm not complaining. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, what do you think about sort of the detachable controllers... So that would just be something that's on the side, but you only hook them up when you want to use it on your TV, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and cartridges, which we've wanted. Yeah, as a as a physical media, cartridges would be cool. Yeah, but how much more? How much less can cartridges hold compared to Blu-ray discs? It's 2016. They should be able to figure something out. We went to the moon about 47 years ago, so <laughs> that's what I always refer to. It's like. Mm. You gotta, you, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I hate to, I hate to even look or even speculate on these NX rumors because, because, because I still just, I just don't know <laughs> what it no is. No idea. I just don't know. And Here's what people are saying about the NX rumor, Jake. Here we go. Naomaha one. Good name. Well done. <laughs> First thing I thought of was blowing those damn cartridges on the NES as a teenager. Please God, no. Ah uh, yes, Jake. Will this return? Blowing cartridges. That was an that was an unofficial, effective method. Yeah, even though it told you not to do it. Count yeah. and I actually spoke about that. It told you not to do it. But yeah. No one read that. It was only re- sort of uncovered later in our years. <laughs> Just n- not reading the back yeah. of the cartridge. Yeah. Well, I guess as we were kids, we didn't know how to read. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um. So yeah, do you reckon this is going to return? I reckon people are just going to do it. Yeah. Well, we don't blow 3DS cartridges, you know. They always work. That's the that's the that's the difference. Would you call that a cartridge? I call that more of a card. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's I guess that's still, yeah. 
They could they could fashion a, a cartridge more of a 3DS kind of style. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, it's interesting. Because you know how small the 3DS ones are, mm. they can fit a, a lot on it. I mean, look at Xenoblade Chronicles. Mm. Make them quite bigger. I mean, imagine what you can fit in that. Mm. Um, Dragodifrit <laughs> says, "Does cartridges cartridges mean no more loading times?" Oh yeah. Um, so 3DS, when you put in sort of one of the cartridges, it pretty much loads straight away. <coughs> you can get into it straight away. I don't know about the loading times on Wii U. What are they like? Pretty, pretty dismal. Uh, dismal. No, it depends what game you're playing. Um, like a big game, Xenoblade or something. Xenoblade Chronicle X has. Oh, you had to download a patch for the loading times. True. Which you know, every game have patches these days. Mm. So I wasn't complaining, but they did cut t- uh, loading times pretty much in half. Mm. You, you'd still be waiting. Um, you know, ma- maybe maximum twenty seconds for a loading screen, mm. but. That's only like the initial game, initial once you hit like continue game or something or load game. 20 seconds, no loading screens after that once you're in the open world. Mm, so, mm. but you know, uh, I've been playing um, Yoshi's Woolly World recently on Wii U and that has a 10 second loading screen or something. Mm. So they're not terrible. So, yeah, so I don't think you'd get that with cartridges. No, I mean, because I go back to Nintendo 64, were there loading times in that? Not really. Not really, no. Um, no. All good things uh, point to cartridges and... Um... Well, even even just, <coughs> playing, even just playing a regular 3DS game, Animal Crossing has a few loading screens. Mm. Um, but Smash man, Bros. Those things are small, though. True. If you had it like a console kind of thing, a bigger cartridge, you could do a lot more with it. And I'm still hoping if it's cartridges, please have still have HD, you know. <laughs> can they do that? Is that something you can do? It's 2016. They put man on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> they put man on the moon 47 years ago. <laughs> um, I think 47, if my math is right. What was it? Um, 70... 69. Oh. 31 plus 16. Yeah, 47 years ago. <laughs> my math is right. Um, so, <laughs> just announced was... A perfect companion to the NES classic. It's a book. It's called Playing with Power. And it's a big um, sort of book with full of interviews with developers. It's got a showcase of vintage advertising and priceless excerpts from Nintendo Power. Um, so, you know, the old magazine. So, you've got excerpts from that. Lots of hand-drawn maps from old Nintendo games as well. Um, so it's a big kind of hardcover book with, you know, all about Nintendo, um, the history. Uh, it, the slip cover resembles an NES cartridge as well. Yeah. So perfect companion for the NES Classic. I, I really think, like, I'm heading towards getting this NES Classic. And if that comes out with it, I think I'll get both of them, mm. to be honest. Like, mm. that would just be cool to have on the shelf, don't you reckon? Sure. Um, controversy to go with this, Jake. Of course. Uh on Kickstarter, there was a book sort of similar to this called the... Uh, I don't know what it was called. It was an NES Famicom book um, from Bitmap Books. And it was taken down from Kickstarter before this Playing With Power was announced. And I guess that's why it was taken down. So this this book um, was all about Nintendo, but it wasn't licensed by Nintendo. Mm. So they were sort of yeah releasing a book all about Nintendo uh, with all the stuff, maybe similar stuff to what this had on it. But I guess people people were complaining because they backed it, um, and they were complaining that it got taken down. But I guess this is why, mm. because it was competing with an actual licensed Nintendo pro- product. So that's fair enough. I think I, I guess so. But um, maybe maybe have come out with an ex- explanation why they took that down straight away yeah you know yeah well, nintendo has always been really really stingy yeah. with, their, with their stuff i yeah. think even if even um because even, you know there, there was this guy who recreated um all that pokemon music or something he's he had his own youtube channel or something and he recreates all the nintendo music um eight turns it into eight bit or turns it into you know, he just does all the... Oh, no, it was orchestral Pokemon music. He, mm. uh, all the Pokemon soundtracks, he turns it into orchestral. Um, and that got taken down from Nintendo without no explanation and everything. Mm. And he, literally, he... You know how you get um, paid from YouTube? Mm. Literally, his life 
was making that music and putting it up on YouTube. And he got literally everything taken down. He had no copies of all of his music. It was just on YouTube because he thought it would be safe up there. And he, lo- he lost everything. That's really dumb. Well, that is, make- it is dumb. But like Nintendo gave him no explanation why they took it down. It was taken down by Nintendo. Mm. But um, I guess maybe because we might get an orchestral version of the Nintendo music. Maybe. Yeah, I, could see, I could see that happening. Again, just even when people were uploading uh, their Minecraft videos with the Super with the Super Mario map packs, mm. people were getting their videos flagged and take down mm. because mm. oh, Nintendo products can't have it up there. It's pretty stupid. They are they are a bit dumb with that. So yeah, I don't know if that yeah. I'm waiting for the day that our, one of our podcasts get taken down because of the, the music? music. Yeah. yeah. Because already two of our podcasts have sort of, uh, what's the word, infringed copyright just because it's in Nintendo music. Did you put something in the comments? No, no. Yeah, it's it's, it's blocked in um, a couple of countries, but, you know, go... some countries in Europe, you know. Meh. Some, you know, Bolivia. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Hey. What's Bolivia? Is that South America? Uh, uh, probably. I don't know. Oh. I don't know my geography. Um, yep, cool couple more things to talk about jake a few more news topics uh these are recent announcements there was a four minute cinematic trailer announcing the new professor layton game have you seen this yes um so it's professor layton 7 that's what it was sort of tentatively called it's now called lady layton Mm -hmm. what do you think about this i think it's a cool sort of spin to it it's pretty cool yeah Um, because i'm I'm not sure how the professor layton story wrapped up yeah neither but they said they weren't going to make any more Professor Layton games <clears throat> which yeah. is why I was surprised that there was a number 7 coming out but yeah this is why it's it's not Professor Layton it's Lady Layton mm. and I don't know is, is it his sister or Her, um oh um I, yeah they're definitely related somehow um I can't remember mm. it's going to kill me yeah they're definitely blood relatives yeah well, the, the entire trailer was in fucking Japanese, so I couldn't understand one word they were saying. They showed about, in the entire four minutes, they showed about maybe 20 seconds of actual gameplay as well. Um, just some puzzles. It seems as though it's following the exact same way a Professor Layton game does, mm-hmm. but it's just with a uh, new character. So I reckon it looks pretty cool. Cool to me. And it's coming to mobile devices. What? Yeah. 3ds and really ios and android but does that cheapen the product so it's, it's not it's not going to be as big just because no i'm sure there'll be two different things hopefully yeah also i'm not sure if you're going to talk about this as well because there was a an event level five put on mm-hmm. to announce all these things a yokai watch live action movie oh really yeah. i didn't know about this yes so they beat pokemon to it well, Pokemon one has already been announced as well. The Detective Pikachu thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why that's going to be the first ever Pokemon live action movie, but, uh, you know. Because doesn't Pikachu actually speak? Yeah. So, who's the voice of Pikachu? Danny DeVito. <laughs> Wait, didn't someone say that before? Yeah, we were saying that before. Oh, that's what we were saying. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. uh, yeah, strange. I don't know. Yeah. Um... Yeah, this is like I don't know how that works. A yokai watch live action movie? No, that doesn't it, it doesn't work. The anime doesn't even work. I've actually been watching the anime um, as I've been getting ready for work in the morning that's on, so I've just been keeping it on. And I didn't realize, but the anime actually is one of those shows where it's like you know it's a half an hour show or a twenty minute show or whatever. But it has the first ten minutes. I'll speak about it as a twenty minute show. The first ten minutes is its own story, and then it ends, and the next ten minutes is another story. Kind of like SpongeBob. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that until no, I watched it. So neither. Um, and you know how Pokemon sort of maybe spends a whole episode on one Pokemon and then goes to the next episode and talks about another Pokemon. Mm. This yeah, Yokai Watch spends like that ten minutes a story about this Yokai and then the next one is a whole new Yokai. You know. Well, yeah, well, there are a lot more Yokai. There, well. there are heaps of Yokai. Yeah, heaps yeah. of them. But um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And also the end credit music, um, is fucking amazing. They do this Yokai Watch dance, sort of like this um. You know how indie movies finish off with a dance or something? Yeah. It's it's fucking sick. It's so good. You need to watch it. Maybe I should. I don't know. I think I didn't really give it a chance, hey. Yeah. I need to play the game as well. God damn it. 
the game oh the game in the show is so similar like all the music from the show is just in the game mm. i didn't realize that either so is that a good thing you think making them similar um well i mean I, I was i've been watching pokemon x and y as well and all the music is very all the same as well so oh, that, really? that's what they're doing now so. okay that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, even the, even the sometimes it comes up with the battle music when they're back when they're actually battling in the anime. So that's cool. Yeah, not bad. All right. Yeah, I need to play Yoko Watch. I think. Um, before we move on to the last topic of discussion, Jack. Before we um, there's just one little piece of uh, information that is pretty old now, but um, I have I've had this information written down for a long time, waiting to do this episode with okay. you. Uh, Dead Rising 1 and 2 have been put up as remasters. This came out of nowhere, and um, I think it's quite pointless, to be honest. Why? <laughs> Aren't they shitty games? No, I've heard they're really... No, like, the people who like them really like them. So now you can get Dead Rising 1, 2, 3, and 4 that'll come out soon, um, all on the one console. Cool. Uh, I've played I've played number 2, and um, it's best played with people. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a... You can't That's play. a time limit game, though, isn't it? Yeah. With um, in number three, I heard there's a bit of time thing going on, but number four, it's completely taken out. Oh, really? Yeah. So I thought I thought number four was more of a reimagining of the first game. So it might, it might be, but it, it, the time thing time. is gone. Okay. The, yeah. Well, I think yeah, the people who, and I, the people who really like those games are achievement are people who chase achievements because mm. mm. I've heard the achievements are pretty brutal in that game. Mm. Um, yeah, the last topic I had written down, Jake, is a topic that I was deciding whether to make this the topic of the show or not. Okay. So we could just do two topics. We could spend some time talking about this and then our next topic. What do you reckon? Depends what it is. All right, well, let's just get into it. Blast Ball. Oh, I've seen zero from... I haven't seen anything from this. Well, you don't have to see it because, I mean, we've seen some of it anyway, right? Um... So, Blast Ball, it came out on the eShop as a free game, but it's sort of not a finished product. Like, I think there's still a bit of work left to do on it, but a, t- a few tweaks or something. And um, this is going to be released with the actual game, isn't it? Like, when you put in the Federation Force game, you can... There's a button just to go to Blast Ball. Is that how it works, or is that a completely separate thing? No, I feel like it would be... Yeah, once you load the menu for... Load the game for Federation Force, yeah. I feel like the menu will be split. Yeah, to Blast, Blast Ball. Ball, yeah, yeah. yeah. Something like that. So, um... This is what annoys me, Jake, and we, we predicted this. Blast Ball is out, and people are saying, wow, this is actually good. Ugh. It's all over the internet. Like, people are actually changing their mind on this now. Knew it. Knew it. Here's what some people are saying. I played... Oh, wait. His name is Sawyer Griffin. Giffen. Sawyer's a good name. I played it, and honestly, might buy this game. Because Blast Ball is way more fun than I thought. And the art style slash graphics look so nice on the 3DS than on YouTube. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to kill someone, I swear to God. Um, the Kirby Clobberer, Clobber, yeah, the Kirby Clobberer says, R.I.P. Rocket League. Oh, Jesus. So they're comparing it to Rocket League and saying it's even better. <clears throat> um, this is the last one. Speedum222. I played the tutorial of Federation Force, the actual game, and it's actually pretty decent and great gameplay-wise. I love how people say it's actually, actually yeah. yeah. Um, and there's oh. actually uh, there's actually um, a review on um, YouTube. I think there's only one review of Blast, Blast Ball so far from what I've seen. It's a 10-minute thing. And the title is, Blast Ball is actually really good. God. People just have... No faith in these things. We said it was going to be good. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've seen lots of gameplay and it looks fucking fun. Like, it looks good. I can't. I actually can't wait for these. Yeah. Yeah, me too. So. Oh, man. <laughs> it annoys me so much, though. I wonder... I wonder... Why do people... These people who say, like, Oh, F this game, F this game. Do do they just, like... For example, if, if a YouTuber makes a video... So they put the put the trailer out for mm. Federation Force, and a YouTuber goes and makes a reaction video to that video, and then now this week he's made a this game is actually really, really good. Does he go back and delete that terrible reaction video, or does he have to live with those live with that now? I suppose you'd have to keep it. Isn't isn't that part of? I mean, if they get paid for it, isn't that sort of part of your income? That that video. Oh, it depends how pop. Yeah. Yeah, but um, in terms of keeping him like keeping his. 
His dignity? Yeah, dignity. I don't God. know. Like, it depends how fucking much shit he gave it. This is this is the way of, like, because this is the way of game media culture now. People can just make comments like that. Yeah, yeah. And oh, this is shit. I haven't even played it yet, but this is going to be shit. Yeah. This is good. This is a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, it is a good feeling. Hey, like, people are just sort of being corrected, you know, changing their mind. But it, is it... It doesn't even seem, seem like that they, they, they care they made all those comments, you know? Mm. They're just saying, oh, this is actually pretty good, you know? Seems like we're the, we're the only ones angry. I am going to go back and find a bunch of YouTubers or um, people yeah. who have written articles yeah. and say who have badmouthed the game and yeah. now have reversed, the, have reversed their thoughts. I'm yeah. just going to comment saying, oh, but this is what you thought a couple months yeah. ago. Quote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And uh, once you do your research, Jake, bring it on the show we'll, and uh, we'll name them. We'll name and shame them. Awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I am excited for Blast Ball. It looks like a cool uh, multiplayer game as well. So. The, the thing that's on 3DS now, is that actually multiplayer? Yeah, you can play online. I might with give that. it a shot then. Yeah. So I, I was thinking about playing it last night. Um, I just didn't have the time. So, mm. so Jake, let's get into some questions. No, <laughs> because I want to talk about something. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I've Sorry. been playing a brand new game. Actually, I, I've had a, I had a, for a, Maybe about a week and a half, I had a big extended break from games. I was really busy. Then I went to music festival. Then I thought, during the week, I thought, nah, I finally got some time to myself, play a game. So I started Yoshi's Woolly World, mm. playing, I'm going to 100% that game. I'm pretty close to it as well. The game is just, I don't think I've talked about Yoshi's Woolly World on a podcast before, but I think briefly. Yeah, but it is one of my favorite Wii U games because it's just, I can't stop smiling when I play the game. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. But um, but no. Then during later during the week, I watched a let's play in Zero Time Dilemma, mm. and so I'm you the, watched it. Well, what? well, I watched the first hour, which okay. in terms of in the time frame of Zero, Zero Time Dilemma is yeah. nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. It's yeah. it's nothing. A few secrets revealed, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, no, I I'm I'm hooked. I'm gonna get this game. Wait, so you don't have to play any any of the previous two? You do. You actually do. Ooh. So the. I watched a very good 30-minute recap of both those stories. Mm. Um, I'm still lost completely. Wow. This, the story this is, is... what turns me off. The like, story is so elaborate. There's so much science and and thought... Oh, I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. But you can't even... I mean, is the very first Zero Time Dilemma, is that on the 3DS? So, 999 it's called. Yeah. And it's coming out on Steam very soon. But it's on the original DS, mm. which I, I'm thinking of buying. If you can get your hands on it. Uh, it's on eBay. There's okay. a few copies on eBay. Yeah. Uh, and then Virtue's Last Reward is the second game. Uh, and that's on the 3DS. That's on 3DS. You can get it on eShop, which yeah. I am. <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've tried to look that in the shops or on eBay or any, anywhere else. You, you can't get that anywhere. Yeah. So you can get it on the eShop. Though, I'm so. just going to get that. That's easy. And yeah, so I'm either going to wait for 999 to come up on Steam Oh, I'm just Did you ever end up downloading the demo for Virtue's Last Reward? No. Oh. I don't I just don't think a demo. Yeah, does demo does justice. no, no, it doesn't. So so in terms of the, the timeline for these games, uh Zero Time Dilemma is actually in the middle, with nine 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 being the first one and Virtue's Last Reward being at the end. Oh. So, so really you only have to play nine nine nine? No, you still because it's all time travel, it's all you still need to play them in chronological order. In terms of when they've come out. Yeah, yeah. So, me coming in as a brand newbie to this franchise and only just watching a recap, I'm still lost, but I can still grasp it. And I feel and everyone I read on the internet says, no, play the first two games first before diving in. I've, I haven't done that. So, I, once I finish this game, I am going to go back and play them through all again. Um just so I can get my head around the whole story. Because mm. I know when I when I finish this game, there's going to be a resolution which... <laughs> You're going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm still excited to see the story through because I I get the I get the very basic of the game. And so I've only played for three hours or so. And some of the things I've already mentioned have, have referenced earlier games. Mm. I've understood it, but there's still this deeper level, which I haven't got to yet. I know the plot line of Virtue's Last Reward where it's sort of a bunch of people are stuck inside this chamber thing. It's sort of similar to Saw and you've got to sort of figure your way how to get out of there. Um, puzzle solving kind of thing. Mm. What's different about the new one? That's that's It's the same thing? That's still the same thing. Cool. Yeah. But, uh, nine that's what hooked me in. Yeah. So. Nine people are stuck in a 
um, a testing chamber in Nevada desert. Yeah. And they just essentially have to go through all these tests and, and puzzles to escape. So there's a big door, um, a minimum of six there people. No spoilers here because you've only seen the first hour. So pretty much. Yeah. Uh, a minimum of six people have to die um, to get out. Oh, wow. As each person dies, a new code is really revealed. Yeah. Those six codes unlock the door. So This would be a cool movie. Yeah. Yeah, I just... Even TV series. Or maybe, I don't know. But I, that's I think, cool. I think so, yeah. And so far, I've never experienced anything like this game before. It's it's R18 and it's, mm. it's, it's serious. Yeah, yeah. So in my first three hours... Several people have already died. Um, but the point of this game is that you make decisions and the path branches off and you can yeah. the, you can see this big flow chart. Yeah. All this it's like a so it's you've like got a DNA. To, you've got to replay it so many times to find out every single well, pathway. No, this is a good thing. You can just the game is divided. Oh, you can just jump to right certain yeah. paths where the path branches. That's awesome. And that's yeah, you just jump to the path, make your decision that you that you didn't make before, yep. and it makes that other path. Yeah. It's yep. awesome. Wow. Okay, cool. Because you can see what happened if you didn't choose that thing. Yeah, yeah. And then with the whole thing with Zero Time Dilemma, in terms of the broader story, you, you, you still don't know which branching path is leading. All the branching paths, no matter if it, can, if it ends up being a game over, all the paths lead into the final product. You know what I mean? Mm. That's, that's, what I, that's the feeling I get already. In three hours. What? So there's only one ending, really. There's only one ending, mm. but everything that happens, there's so many different ways you can get to it. Yeah. So, I've I've done my first puzzle. I've done my first big puzzle. Yeah. And it took a good forty five minutes. Mm. Was it, it challenging? It was. Did Did you have to look up how to do it? No, no, no. I didn't. It was challenging in a in a. It was so rewarding though. Yeah, yeah. You, you're just in this room. All the things are there. are there. Yeah, and it's a small room, isn't it? It's pretty small. Yeah, it's it just has a it's two stories, but the 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 top story is just like, just like a, a nothing. Yeah, just one thing is up there. So you just have to go through the room, finding keys, unlocking things. Those things get other things, other keys. You get codes for mm. stuff. You have to. I had a pen and paper next to me, writing stuff down. There are these statues that um that had their arms fold it out another way when you got a note their arms mean a code for something else everything just bleeds the puzzles are so good do you think playing this game will make you smarter i hope so like it, logically and make you sort of a better thinker yeah because you have to think outside the box yeah already yeah, yeah. and it's just it's problem solving in a real obscure way mm. <laughs> i love it yeah. it's so yeah. fun I just don't like, man. You getting all three of those games, that's like, that's like a year gone for you to be honest yeah. of gaming. I can't wait. That's though. huge. I can't wait because yeah. even just like I said, the story is so intriguing to me. Even though watching the recaps, I know I know the endings of all the games now, mm -hmm. but those games are so long. It didn't touch on everything that happened in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. So it's all the small moments. Well, I mean, like you said, like getting there is the fun bit because there's all these branch off paths and everything mm, of what yeah. happens. I but, don't. I'm not sure. In, I think this is the only game that has this branching path mechanic. Um, I'm, I'm no. I'm pretty sure Zero. To, um, uh, Virtue's Last Reward does. Okay. I'm pretty sure because when you were speaking about it, it reminded me when I was listening to a review of Virtue's Last Reward. So, right. but I don't know if you can just go back to it. Mm. Um, like you were saying, I think you have to replay the whole game. Okay. Either way. But, um, so all the, in terms of all the games, all the games have changed art style every time, which is a bit jarring. 999 is, um, just classic anime, no mm. animation to it. It's just... Yeah, yeah. Like the freeze frame kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't mind. Yeah. Um, second game is real, um, sort of Final Fantasy 3D models. Like well, that, early Final Fantasy 3D. Yeah, well, models. when I played the the second 3DS game, the the Virtue's Last Reward, moving through sort of the the little room when I was trying to figure out how to get out of it, it was kind of, you know, you know, finicky. Mm. I, I don't know how to explain how you know it was kind of hard to control and it was kind of ugly to look at and everything. And I, 
because this game requires you to spend maybe you know sometimes two hours in this one room mm. that's what threw me off I, could, I don't think i could spend that long in just this one room because it was kind of ugly to look at and it was just sort of hard to get around it was it wasn't normal controls mm. and sort of is that how you felt about the third one or is it i haven't had to control anyone yet the only thing i've had to control is uh when you're in the room you're first person yeah and do you walk around in that room or do you do you click on something and you just he click walks there yeah, yeah 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 okay so that's what i sort of found that threw me off kind of bit mm. i'd rather just walk around myself in the room okay well i mean the i'm not sure how later rooms are coming but in this room it was small enough that everything was in your yeah, view yeah. that you just touch on and he talks or mm. whatever mm. the only jarring thing about this game and i'm sure the other games are gonna be like this too the voice acting the voice acting and the writing awful awful what really yeah terrible well what the review i saw about number two that's like the the best thing about it like this this, yeah the story is great it's Mm. just how it's executed with the writing Mm, maybe awful maybe the japanese voice is a a lot better maybe and i have the option to switch but maybe you should maybe i should give it a go Mm. but um it's just so i'll have to show you (laughs) all it's cringeworthy yeah but um the comparisons to Saw are, are there because the main villain, I suppose, is, is Zero. The mm. guy, he's dressed all in black. He's got that mask on thing, um, like a witch doctor kind of thing. Um, and he's got that deep voice, kind of like kind of like Jigsaw. Yeah. So I was actually, I was a little frightened playing the game as well. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a little yeah. scary because... It's eerie. Eerie and, and there's death traps and there's, mm. as I said, already people have died and... One of, res- one of the ending results already turned out to be this like a, a huge twist already out of this very innocent character <sighs> awesome, <laughs> awesome game so um, unfortunately this game was $62 to buy on 3DS oh yeah on Steam it's I think it's just over 40 mm. I don't know if I made the right choice buying on 3DS yes you did yeah you the, did. Tu- the touch screen is actually kind of awesome yeah but I want to support 3DS yes 3ds um <laughs> and this game is coming to vita as well yeah it's on vita yeah like i said um 999 should be coming to steam they've teased it and i can just pick up virtue's last road mm. as a download and i checked it last night i think it's again just over 40 dollars on 3ds mm. not too bad I'd, I'd like to play it it's just that that's a game that consumes a lot of a lot of your time mm. and like, like i said a couple of weeks ago i'm going to divide these games out so i'm going to play zero time the limit Finish Yoshi's Woolly World. Yeah. 999. What, what happened to your thing about playing a big RPG and then playing a smaller thing like a Lego game? Well, that's what I'm going to do. These are my these are my big games. These are your big games, okay. Yeah. And, and then, um, Yoshi is kind of like your small game. Yes. I need some happiness after this depressing yeah. awfulness. Yeah. Yoshi's a good game to go to then. Well, anything really on your Nintendo Wii U. Yeah. And uh, like Yoshi would take me just another week to 100%. It's a very really good game. Yeah. So yeah. Um pick up zero time bomber right now right now yeah at least for you i'm not i think you can do it i know you're an awful you're bad at games but scott uh, watch what's your let's play of this what's your, like maybe the first hour you'll be hooked i i know i i was already hooked off to watching zero um the second one so i mean mm. i know it's i know it's good but um oh, i don't I'm, I'm shit that price point is all just uh, a bit of a barrier as well yeah, because if yeah. you're shit and if you pick up this game for $62 and you don't play it afterwards if to you be honest it, the price point on 3DS games doesn't really bother me just because I, I, li- I love buying 3DS games anyway true um, I've already planned out with my next so I'm going to play Zero Time Dilemma Yoshi's Woolly World 999 Kirby Planet Robobot after that ooh okay okay can't wait for that and then I'll probably finish off another you got Dragon Quest coming Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's just too much shit. I also I saw Fire Emblem sitting on my 3DS oh, yeah. as well. Fire Emblem, God. Bra- bravely second. <sighs> this is just ridiculous. Do you think on your deathbed, when you're like ninety something years old, do you think there will be some of these games that we've just mentioned that you still haven't played? I'll still be playing bravely second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God, I hope not. My life wouldn't. I'll have no resolution in my life then. I just don't know how we're going to fit it all in. Yeah. 
the more we leave it, the more new games are going to come out and everything, and they're just they're just going to be left behind. Like I said, I had a week and a half off gaming. Yeah. That's a whole week and a half. Yeah. I could have finished the entire game at that point. Mm-hmm. I was just I just wasn't in the mood. Um, I, I downloaded a game on my PS3. Okay. You suggested oh. it to me. Uh, Mass Effect. Mass Effect. Yes. Yeah. Um, I haven't played it yet, but my God, it took like three days to download. Ugh. Your internet's terrible. No, no, it's not nothing to do with my internet. This is the same thing that happened with um, uh, Ratchet and Clank. I downloaded Ratchet and Clank on my PS3 when I was living with you as well. Oh. And took like three days. Well, do you know why? I, I have no idea. It's something to do with maybe it's a setting on my P- PlayStation that when I'm using the internet on it, it's like... It doesn't use it. It, it only uses a, a certain amount or something. Mm. Um, the same thing happens with my Xbox. Like it's just ridiculously slow to download anything. So mm. don't know. Oh, I don't know. What so you haven't played it yet? I haven't played it yet, but um, it's there, and I know it's there. And I think leading up to Mass Effect Four coming out, I'm going to play the entire trilogy. That's good. Mass first Mass Effect you can smash out in a weekend. Yeah. Well, I mean, I played Mass Effect Two, and I. I played like half the game in one night remember i had an all-nighter yes so i I can smash it out easy and um three is quite a longer game but um yeah it's exciting i thought number two was the longest no i'm pretty sure they get longer and longer yes because i spent a few hours i spent a couple hours just imagine how big mass effect 4 is gonna be oh all those different planets i mean take a look at dragon age inquisition that was just giant Mm. and um uh, mass effect gonna be huge well you ready for some questions then scott yes i i am prepared so uh i gave you these um i gave you these questions before the show started Mm. as a bit of a prep because they are they do require a bit of a a thinking i don't want any silence happening here (laughs) so hope you've had a bit of a think yeah i have yeah Uh, i I might you know need you to fill in some time while i (laughs) think that's so. exactly why I didn't. <laughs> I've got some ideas. Okay. okay. Well, here we go. <clears throat> These aren't would you rather. They're just questions. Okay. What are the games that scared you as a child? Um, I've got a lot of answers for movies, but uh, <laughs> no, we're talking about games. <laughs> I know, I know. There's this one because I, I never really played horror games as a child. Um, I guess when I first played Obscure, mm. that was kind of scary. Um, just going into the sort of the kitchen area or closed doors and then the zombies come out of the roof and all that. That was pretty scary. But I think the biggest scare I had was when I bought Fear. Mm. So oh. I bought Fear on PC and, yeah, that was fucking scary. Yeah, uh, that was one of my games too. Yeah, so um, there's just this one one moment where you were inside this sort of office building and this little um, blue blob thing that was flying around. It's not, I mean, I mean it's not like a ghost or anything, but it's just... It comes at you so fast, and it just it's one of those jump scares. It's like, holy shit. And then you don't know when it's going to come next, so you're so anxious mm. waiting for it. Um, but the biggest scare of all is fucking just out of nowhere. You just get in an elevator, and you're just fucking traveling up the elevator or down the elevator, and all of a sudden the fucking lights go out, yeah. and the little girl is just standing in the corner. And you're like, fuck. <sighs> and then the lights come back on, and she's gone. But it's like you're still confined in that same elevator. Yeah. You can't get out. Um, yeah, that just uh, that that was yeah that that did it for me. Hey, yeah. yeah. Um, I I didn't finish that game because it was it was hard. Mm. But that's because I'm a shitty gamer and I was young as well. So. Yes. Well, uh, for me, because um, I was younger than everyone else, uh, House of the Dead. Was, oh really? That was yeah. like a sort of that was. I think the first time I played that was in the um you know in uh is it insanity the insanity or time zone yeah or... time zone yeah, yeah that kind of thing and that's just why it wasn't scary to me it was like sort of just like oh we'll just shoot some things no yeah. that was all right yeah we had that on the Xbox though mm. I don't know it just uh freaked me the fuck out <laughs> it's quite a dark game lots of sort of these weird bird things and yeah yeah that was cool though bring House of the Dead back yeah bring it back get rid of Resident Evil House. Of the dead. Wee. Wee. <laughs> um, other than that, I, I actually couldn't think of anything else. Um, mm. but there are definitely games that kept me up at night a few times, but I just can't think of it. Speaking of scary games, I actually started watching the original Alien movie last night. Oh, yes. Good movie. And, um, I haven't seen it in a very, very long time, but just watching the very... St- I, I didn't finish it, but I, I just watched the very beginning, but um, just because I wanted to play a game instead. And 
seen some of some of the scenery around the ship it just reminded me of alien isolation because it's based off pretty much the first um ship and um yeah that made me want to get the, the game I, I still need to get that and play it i have to that's a really difficult game it's so i know hard, i know but i couldn't I only played it for about half an hour, and I I, I progress. I didn't make any progress. I've, I just regret not getting it. You know, I have to. I have It'd to. be super cheap right now. Yeah, yeah. Because the last time I picked it up was it was a hundred dollars when it first came out, so I could find it cheap, pre-owned maybe. Sure. Uh, here's one that I didn't tell you, but um, it should be just a quick yes or no question. Well, yeah. I wonder why you only said four before. Yes. This one you didn't need any extra thought okay. to. Uh, if you had to choose portable gaming or console gaming for the rest of your life, which would it be? Usually, I would say portable straight away, but right now I'm into console gaming. Yeah, you have your phases. I, I do have my phases. I'm into console phasing. I, th- I think I'd, I've got to say portable. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I'd got to say portable. Just like I'm in a console phase right now. But when I'm in portable phase, I just have a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got to say portable. I'd agree with you, Rana. Yeah. yeah. Um, which games have you given a second chance to? Now, a couple of weeks ago, we did talk about games you traded in. But this is a game that you uh, played, put in the shelf for maybe six months, and you thought, I'll give it another try. Yeah, this is one that I said that I think I needed more time on, just because, well, right now, Syndicate, Yep. There's a game that I'm giving a second chance because I played it ages ago and just turned it off. Um, another one would be Fallout 4. Yep. I gave a second chance to and I can't get back into it. Uh, Fallout, I, Fallout 3 I gave a second chance to but realised no. I know another game it. is uh, Animal Crossing for you. Oh yeah. I you, traded that in. You brought it and back. I, and I re-bought it. Yeah. So that's a big second chance. Yeah, I, d- oh, I don't know why I tried it that in. No, that's, Animal Crossing is a good game, yeah. yeah. One of my favourites now. There you go. Yeah, I actually... I couldn't think of anything for myself. But... Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at my games. I can't really think of anything else. No. Oh, Far Cry 2. I had to give a second chance to, but I just realised I couldn't do that again. Couldn't like, do that to yourself? No. It's just shit. <laughs> uh, for me, actually, um, Sleeping Dogs was a big one for me. Mm. Uh, it, it didn't grab me at first, but um, I actually got a fair way through it through the second time I, I picked it up. Uh, actually, Majora's Mask again for me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I, I got it for Christmas. Didn't enjoy it one bit, even though I, I knew I wasn't going to enjoy it because it's, it's such a different experience. But I thought, no, I'm going to enjoy it because it's Zelda. Mm. And I actually did enjoy it, and I haven't finished it yet, though. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, Bravely Default. I I, st- I got that with Fire Emblem Awakening and um, really got into Fire Emblem Awakening and I only played a couple of hours Bravely Default and left it for a good six months maybe mm. but then picked it up and yeah, really enjoyed it. So And finished it too. Finished it. Yeah. Decent effort. Yeah. Next question. Um, what games would make a good TV show? Well, I know one game that would make a fucking awesome TV show and I've always thought this is Far Cry 3. Yeah. Yeah, that story of Far Cry 3, like, just um, a couple of, um, no, a group of guys just going on a sort of a trip. Um, they don't know a thing about combat or anything. They're just a couple of guys. Well, one of them is in the army, but mm-hmm. he's ex-military or something. And then they crash land on this island with all these fucking gun maniacs and all that. That's a cool TV series, I reckon. Okay. So, it's sort of trapped on an island, and they he, he, the, the one guy loses his brother who's the only military trained person yeah and um he needs to rescue all his friends from all these people so and that the main villain Vass he'd, he'd make an awesome villain for the TV series as well do you mm-hmm. remember him? I do yeah yeah. do Sorry. you see him very often in the game though? No. he he's not actually the main villain like oh. he, he's advertised as the main villain but he actually you actually you know get to kill him three quarters into the game okay you know and then there's another main villain afterwards so yeah. I just had, I, I was thinking maybe Borderlands would make a good TV show. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I feel like it, there are enough stories and good characters in Borderlands. That, that would be a cool um, sort of setting. And I, I'd, I'd love to see sort of. I'd love to see kind of. Um, who's the director from Mad Max? I'd love to see him do it. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. 
Mad Max r- really reminded me a lot of Borderlands. Yeah, f- absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good movie. Very good movie. Um, I also thought of Red Dead Redemption, but yeah, I think more more movie. Yeah, for Red Dead. But like I was saying a couple of weeks ago when I played the game, um, that game is so tailored to a game mm. experience because of how much time you're dedicating to it and the experiences you have with it. So I don't think that can translate well to not playing it. Yeah, yeah. Last of Us. Yeah, mm, that's more I'm, of a, um, you know, it's like The Walking Dead and everything. We've already got Walking Dead, so mm. I think any maybe any Bioshock game as well. Yeah. Uh, sorry, but not Bioshock. Um, Bioware game. Bioware, yeah. But uh, again, those games are, are, are so yeah. A good Mass Effect TV series would be good, I reckon. Mm. Mm. Yep. Uh, last question. Um, what's the worst game you've ever played? Oh, worst game I've ever played. Um, straight away comes to mind the two games that have actually um, returned to a shop, which is Sunset Overdrive and. <sighs> But I can't say Sunset Overdrive. It's not the worst game I've ever played yeah. by far. Um, Story of Seasons is pretty bad. <laughs> but I, I never really gave it a chance. I never really got past the tutorial. So mm-hmm. I can't really say that either. Mm-hmm. Fallout 3 comes to mind. Mm. I fucking hated that game. Like, literally... I, cu- I did give it a second chance, but... Like, I, I, I hated every single second I spent with that game. I really tried to get into it, but I... I I'm gonna get shot for saying it, but I yeah I fucking hate that game. <laughs> I understand, I understand. Um, I I got as well. I came into it very late, and I got trapped inside a DLC. Yeah, yeah. Which I couldn't get out of, and um, it was actually the combat was so hard for me, and there was this bit where it was like an auto save. I was in the middle of a combat thing, and every time I died, it just reloaded back into that combat, and I yep. couldn't get out of that spot. So I was like, I yep. was trapped. Yeah. So it was really fucked. Uh, one of my most hated games recently, because that's all I can think of, Battleborn. Mm-hmm. I had no fun with that game. You know, I know big multiplayer games like that, you have to push past this barrier mm. of trying to learn the games. 10 hours in, still no fun. I play games to have fun. Mm. I was so frustrated with that game. <laughs> no. I, and I, I feel sorry for Battleborn because Overwatch just destroyed it. Yeah. And no one talks about Battleborn anymore, but... There's a reason. It's awful. <sighs> I'm trying to think of some games that I traded in as well. You know how we had an episode about all the traded in games? Yeah, I wonder if I made a list of that. Um, um, but I... yeah. Either way, um, games we hate are pretty few and far between, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it takes a lot for me to actually hate a game. Oh, There's a uh, lot of games I don't really, you know, like. I hated but... Destiny. I didn't. I hated Destiny. Destiny, your hatred from Destiny, I think a lot of it comes from everybody's love from Destiny. Sure. I think as well. Because I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I just the, the hype from Destiny as well, that gets you That gets you going. I've never played Pokemon Go, but I kind of hate it just because of the amount of tension it's getting, you know? Sure, yeah. It's just, yeah, burdens it. Hmm. Are those your questions? They are. Very nice. Very good. Thank you. Let's get into the topic of the show. Um, the topic of the show this week is ukulele. <laughs> Your indentation just... I know. I felt, felt I was getting a bit flat, so I needed to, uh, you know, liven things up a bit. All right. Um, ukulele, the... So, so, it was a toy box pre-alpha gameplay demo was released, and I think it was only for the Kickstarter people who put money into Kickstarter. They got it. Okay. Um, so we've seen some on YouTube and it's really basic. Um, the people, this, the person that I saw playing it on YouTube said that he's actually seen real gameplay from the real game. And he said, like, my God, it does look good. Mm. Like with all the actual features and the, the proper map and everything. But um, this was pretty much all, so we could see the mechanics of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, how Yuka and Laylee, you know, work together, what you can do with them. You can bounce up and sort of fly and roll, all those kinds of things, and the way he spins to, to hit things. Um, yeah, I... You, you can see the, there's a bit where it changes the camera angles. You can do a bit of puzzle solving. Mm-hmm. It really should have sort of showcases snippets of what this whole game is going to look like. Um, lots of platforming, like jumping up onto these wobbly levers and then... Uh, rolling up um, 
rolling up this hill that if you stop you're going to slide down lots of different things uh, in this thing that you, you know this is just going to be a huge part of the game mm -hmm. but you don't like what you saw i just i just don't know why this thing exists like it's a good preview of what what to expect <clears throat> yeah but there was no environment to it there was no you're just going through box untextured room after untextured but again room. I, I don't think that's the point i think the point was the mechanics yeah but we've seen how this game operates i i just i just i i, I could have gone through life not knowing this this existed you know I, it's not it's not that I hate it I was bored watching the video because I wasn't playing it yeah but I mean when I was watching it I took it differently I imagined what things would be like you know mm. I guess I just have more of imagination <laughs> but I guess that's the thing I guess it, it made you imagine rather than just showing you things sure I saw some of the creature design was really cool yeah yeah uh, yeah I just um, how similar is it to Banjo oh, man, that? even the transition screens when you go from room to room the how the, this, yeah. the thing comes in. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the, the shadow thing. Oh. The um, the feather things that you were collecting. How is it not... How um, they... The little dialogue boxes is all the same. The same writing. Yeah. Even... Uh, the, did you see the bit how he, he got to pretty much nearly the top of the hill and he got one of those ghost riders? No, I didn't see that. So there's these things that you can collect. So they're pretty much like Jinjos. Yep. And instead of the Jinjos just staying there going, Help! Help! <laughs> yeah. Um, these things, when you see them, they run away, so you got to catch them. Oh, okay. So it's a, it's a pretty cool thing for it. And they're like these little ghost things. So, yeah, pretty much just like Banjo-Kazooie. I wonder if... I know majority of people... I know the people working on this game are used to be w working at Rare and made Banjo-Kazooie. Mm. How can they get away with... Is this infringement of copyright at all? I know there's no... There's nothing... I don't know. That, like, it's their game. They made it. But it's it's property of rare yeah and i know there's it's just the fact that it's the similarities are just mm. because because when it comes to something like when you compare it to music when someone makes a guitar riff that's in the slightest bit mm -hmm. similar to another really popular song mm. people get sued like that but maybe these developers are still on good terms with rare is that sure or is do they leave rare on bad terms yeah i'm not sure what the thing is like that. Like, maybe they're all just, you know, good friends and they don't really give a shit. They're like, yeah, yeah, go for it. You do your own thing. Because they know Rare aren't going to make another Banjo-Kazooie game? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. look what Rare are doing now. Sea of Thieves. I'm st I still have hope for Sea of uh, Thieves. I like what they're doing. It's not Banjo, is it? <laughs> <sighs> You're getting Banjo! Uh, we are pretty much getting Banjo now. Ukulele is Banjo. Yeah. Um, just different name, different characters, so... When's this coming out? Um, it is Q1 2017, so it was delayed. You think it'll make it in time for NX? I don't know. It was announced for Wii U, not NX, though. Yeah. I don't know. You'd get it on NX. I'd get both. Oh, my God. Is this what you're going to do for all those games coming out at the same time? Get it on both? Only if there's physical copies. Yeah. You don't need a physical copy on Wii U. Why not? Just get the NX version. I love the Wii U, though. It means you can play it handheld. <sighs> Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? But, um, yeah, a lot of similarities to, I thought, Super Mario 64. Did you see sort of that spiral mountain kind of thing that he had to climb up? No. Um, get to the top? No. I skipped a lot of the video. Oh, right. Well, um, it kind of reminded me of that bomb... Um, Battlefield, bomb, yep. battlefield. Bomb, bomb, battlefield. Yeah, um, how you have to sort of go around that spiral mountain to get to the very top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, sort of ukulele had to do that as well, but the um, the hills were all these ones that you, if you stop, you slide down, so you had to roll all the way up the top. Sure. And when you change the angles, it was quite, kind of difficult, and then you had to jump as you're rolling, and if you fall, you know, you got to start again. I mean, that's what I miss. We, we haven't had one of those games in a long, long time where platforming to get up to a certain point, and if you fall, you got to do it all again, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I guess I guess the other th the, the other thing that comes close is Mario Galaxy. Yeah, that was the last one, though. Yeah. Even oh, maybe Mario Three D World. But it, but even then, like the Mario Galaxy games are so much more advanced than those original sixty four games. Yeah. This ukulele game mimics the sixty four mechanics 
of platforming. Mm. Like, it's like bringing us a Nintendo 64 game in HD, pretty much. That's cool. yeah. that, like that's that's how much it, because it's a small studio as well. They didn't have you know a huge budget. They had to make it sort of limited as well. So with what they could do, so that's why it sort of resembles it so clearly. Didn't they get millions of dollars worth of? Yeah, but I I, I don't think you realize how much it costs to make a game. Oh well. no, I, absolutely. But mm. still, millions of dollars. Calm down, just calm down. Okay. Anything else you want to say about Yuka? No, Lounge. I'm just, I'm just, um, um, I don't need to see any more of this game, you know? Mm, mm. I don't need to hear any more music from this game. Well, that whole background track was the music we've already heard as well. Yeah. yeah. Just pretty much banjo music. Just give it to me now. I want it now. I just wonder where they're at with it, you know? Maybe they've got one world left to do. And mm, I don't know. Don't know how it works. No idea. It's still a fair decent away. Fair, yeah. fair amount of time away. How about we get into Nos Shuffle? Okay. Can we talk about... No. What? I was going to say F-Zero, but nah. You've already talked about it, Mason. We can... While, while I get this all up, we can sort of bring up um, some F-Zero X. So, you tell me some of your memories with F-Zero, because you missed out. Well, um, I was awful at this game. Hmm. It was... And then... Um, you, well, you were really young when we were playing. Yeah. And then um, I picked it up not long ago on, on Wii U Virtual Console. I didn't realise how difficult it actually was coming back to it after all these years. Mm. How actually really difficult it was to control your vehicle. And he's, in the slightest movement, you, you're gone. Um, but not, not, to, not typically me playing, but um, our brother Mitchell... One of the coolest things watching was um, him trying to beat the best time in silence. The yeah, second, yeah. The, just the big loop. Yeah. Um, awesome. So awesome trying to get those time trials. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just... It was... Um, it's a good game. Bring it back. Well, you uh, um, recently played it as well when you downloaded it on the Wii U. Yeah. Um, so that... I guess that's that's why it's more fresh in my mind because I recently saw you play it, um, and Kian and I spent a lot of time in actually speaking about the music as well. The music was freaking sick. The music, um, and you can actually when you when you do listen to the episode, Jack, you can hear the music and not shuffle. Yeah, I won't listen to it. <laughs> Just skip to not shuffle. <laughs> okay. Um, so not shuffle for those of you who don't know, we've shuffled a list of one hundred games from our childhood. Um, and we're going to shuffle it all up. Whatever game comes up, we're going to speak about Head Down Memory Lane. And Jake, number 33 has come up. Yes. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2003. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2003. I feel like we talked about this game before, you know. I think we talked about it when we were speaking about um, PGA Tour 10 because it was a game that I traded in. So we spoke a little bit about... PGA Tour 2003, but um, best golf game ever, best one ever made, and um, they really haven't um done that since. Actually, when I was when I was looking at a list of um the top PGA Tour games ever, apparently 2004 was the best. But we never got that, mm. so apparently yeah, it improved upon 2003, but uh hasn't been back since. Man, remember all the, every single hole course was incredible yeah yeah my favorite one <clears throat> it was uh one of the very last holes in an 18 hole course um you had to just you, it was like a it was like a part three you just had to chip it on to the island in the middle of the water mm. um i don't know just very good do you remember that sort of it was like kind of a jungle course like lots of trees it was like a rainforest yeah was it had heaps of cliffs faces and stuff or no, no, no. That was like the Scotland one. I think. Oh yeah. This is the game that actually had an actual proper career. You know, that's why number ten wasn't good. That's why Rory McIlroy isn't that great because you actually had to beat all the golfers in the game. Mm. You know, um, and they get harder every single time. And I think out of the thirty golfers or something, I got. I think I got up to number twelve, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just. You're bullshitting here. I'm recalling. This yeah. is what I remember. And um, I just couldn't beat this golfer. Hey. Like, it got so hard that I couldn't do it. 
It was pretty hard, yeah. But um, yeah, Rory McIlroy, what I've been playing now is so easy. Mm. Like I'm dominating, and it's too easy that it's boring. Mm. So I've had to increase the difficulty and make it harder for myself. Go into the settings and turn things off and everything. So, but yeah, I miss the challenge of the golf game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The one, the one main thing that they're missing from these games now is that power shot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we love the, the satisfying feeling of getting that power shot. So you had to pretty pretty much click it in the exact same, like the right spot, the sweet spot you had to find. And he'd do this massive power shot. Most satisfying part of that for me was I was playing with the big guy, Big Mo, I think it was called. Mm. Um, and because he was so ma- massive and he gets the power shot, you know, he hits it like you know, 350 yards or something. It's like, <laughs> yes. Was but so uh, who, who is your character? I no, I can't remember. I know Mitchell's was pops. Yeah, it was funny when um you'd miss a shot, he'd get angry. You know, he'd smash the golf club on the ground. I get a heart attack. Or yeah, something. or the yeah. heart attack when he'd get the shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, one of my other favorite uh, courses was um, um, it was yeah, you were pretty much on the top of a cliff face, and a hole was legit. Just right, just down, down there. there, yeah. And we'd always, to... always try and get a hole in one. Yeah, mulligan it. We we spoke about this last time. We spent hours and hours pressing mulligan to get hole in one in every single shot. Mm. Like, the amount of hours we spent on that game is ridiculous. Didn't we, didn't we break it one time from like doing too many replays or something? Or I can't remember that. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. But there's mm. there's a button you can do you just keep pressing and it just replays over and over again mm, like mm. in quick succession and I think we broke one of the games not broke it as in we just like it just crashed on us yeah yeah yeah. I'm not sure if it was Tiger Woods or if it was another game I'm thinking of I don't know but um, <clears throat> yeah I I can't see if, if we were to go back to this game right now today I can't see it being I'm not sure how fun it, much fun it would be I know, yeah, that's the thing. There's no way of actually playing this game anymore. Yeah. We can see gameplay, but um, it's definitely not going to be as good because we thought that even the graphics were amazing back then, but you could look at it now and it's just... <laughs> yeah, I uh, had to look up something on YouTube because the commentators in this game were fantastic. Yeah, they were good. Uh, I looked at... One, one of the key comments they made. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> that was what I was trying to look up. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then I... It was like a 30 minute video. I was just trying to get that one thing. Oh, next time you, you should have um, got cut that bit out for me so I could use it in this. But... I'll have to find it again. I'm not sure how long it was, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good game. Uh, yeah, like you're saying, they, they don't make them like they used to. No. I think I wore myself out with Mario Golf World Tour. Like, I was itching for another good golf game and I played a good over 20 hours of Mario Golf. Um, and then when I picked up Roy McElroy, I'd already played so much golf that I was like, I mean, maybe maybe it, it is still challenging, but I've become so good at golf games now that it's just like, I don't know. I know, it's Mario, Go- Mario Golf is pretty hard, eh? Yeah, it is challenging, but um, yeah, I'm dominating in that game now as well, so. Look at you. Golf champion. Golf champion, yeah. Suck at real life, though. But... Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I hit a ball. I think I was... 10 years old or something I was asked to go out today but um, I'm a busy boy can't make it yeah you've got a podcast to do speaking of podcasts uh, is you know are you starting your own podcast soon or with your business what are you making that face for me at all um, maybe I haven't I haven't I haven't made the suggestion yet we're still in early days mm. um, because it would be good news for this podcast because this could go back up on iTunes yeah well that's one of the other things I I, I think because I haven't made a public announcement about it yet but I'm building for, for my business we're building a website mm. um, and I feel like it's a music and lifestyle website kind of thing news website and I feel like this and I want, it's finally an avenue for me to write about games mm. I, mm. I've always want, I've never had the platform to write about games write a massive like Eight page review on Zero Time Dilemma. Oh, yes, I will do that. That'd yeah, be sick. So this is finally an avenue for me to do that, and I feel like the four one one folks can have a basis on that website. Can't talk about the name of the website. Is the name is confirmed and the do- the domain is confirmed, but we haven't made a public announcement about it yet. The four one two folks. Close, but no guys. <laughs> uh, but yeah, those announcements will be 
made shortly. And yes, in terms of another podcast, I feel like because I'm doing it with two other guys, a just a general weekly podcast of like music news or just general what's it's about of things. You're gonna be a busy today. man recording lots of podcasts. Maybe I don't, we don't even have a setup to record. Are, are you gonna be host? I'm not sure if I like hosting. It'll take you back to the good old days of the grind. Ooh, wow. You should um, just put up like one of the episodes of The Grind, just as, you know, a, a flashback, a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been that long, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I used to host radio shows and stuff, but that was just me by myself. So, mm. of course, I had to host. Mm. So, I'm not, sure I, I'm not sure if I like hosting with a group of people. You just like taking... Taking the back seat, yeah, kind of thing. Just sitting back. Yeah, I mean, like when it comes to doing these podcasts, you do all the work. I know. Yeah, maybe I should give you your own segment, so you can sort of go home and prepare it every week. I'll do a weekly segment on zero time dilemma. All right, done. <laughs> but what's it about? Just whatever happened in the game at that. Oh, point. that's just you talking about the fucking game. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Jake, for this podcast. I want you to go home, think of your own segment, and then bring me back something. I had a segment planned for the grind, which I never utilized. Well, so what is it? Well, I'm not going to say it on air. Why not? I? Because. You could hear some feedback, you know? Well, okay. Well, I was thinking of um, doing kind of, what would you call it? Like, a did you know kind of thing. Just, oh, yeah, that's right. Just I a very, very obscure gaming fact about maybe a development of a game yeah, or yeah. maybe a game mechanic or something. Mm-hmm. Um, because there are things that you've searched on Wikipedia or, or Reddit forums and stuff that you file, that you see and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Mm. So I might blow your mind with some trivia. Next week, we're bringing Did You Know, hosted by Jake. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, that'll do it for this week then. Um, oh, just before we leave, I'm um, very happy to announce that we're actually up to date now. So we this is episode 23 we started this podcast 23 weeks ago. Oh, wow. So with this podcast, we're up to date. Didn't we, cla- we didn't catch up a couple of weeks ago? No, no, we never caught up. Oh. So we're, we're, we're caught up now. So we've missed... There's There's been a few times where we've missed a couple of weeks, mm. but we've done some double episodes in a week, so... Yeah. We're up to date. Very happy with that. Well done, us. Yes. Okay, and with that, we'll be back next week. Maybe with Kian, who knows? Maybe not. Ooh. <laughs> See you later. Oh, Jake, any last words? No. Bye.